Have you ever wanted to add some dynamic color effects to your game sprites? Or maybe the background of a card like we see here? In this video, we'll show you how to create a simple rainbow color shader. All right, we'll start off by creating a new shader material for our sprite. I'll be using the Gato uh, icon here, the Gato logo uh, for this. And we're gonna apply a custom shader effect to this sprite. So let's go ahead and take a look. We'll come down, go to material with our sprite selected. And from the drop down, select a new shader material. And then for our shader, select a new shader. And you can go ahead and give this a name of some sort. Rainbow might be good, but for you, maybe a card background or uh, whatever it is you're looking for. If you have any particular uses for us, I'm going to call this Rainbow Tut. And we'll go ahead and jump into the code for our shader. All right. So with our shader open, if it didn't open automatically for you, again, you could just click on it on the inspector or you can just go ahead and double click on it inside of your file system either way this should open up and you should have the shader editor at the bottom of your screen right next to the animation tab there so let's go ahead and what do we got for the code here well it's going to be a canvas item that's the shader type because this is a 2d object we're sticking it on and we're going to have the fragment function of course because we want to apply this to every pixel of our sprite here. Now, I'm going to show you something new here. We're not necessarily going to use this, but you could use it this way if you wanted to. But I'm going to use something else later on. And what this is, is it's like a variable. And we're going to have it exported out here into the inspector. So that you would be able to tweak it. And for this, we just type in the word uniform. It's going to be a float. And we can call it time. Then we can put a colon after that. And we can uh, put in whatever it is, right? So in this case, we know it's a float. But what we're going to do is we're going to give it a hint of it being a range. So we're going to say hint range. And we can see as we start typing, that's the only thing that pops up. And you can go ahead and fill in the values here. For this, I'm going to use 0 0.01 for the third value. And the second value is going to be 10. And of course, end that with a semicolon. And that's going to give us a, allow us to select from a range of floats from 0 to 10, going in 0 0.01 increments. So now if you look in the inspector, you should, you'll have a new section called shader parameters. And you can see the variable, as I'll call it here, the property called time that we created, as well as a range that goes from 0 to 10 and tweaks itself in 0 0.01 increments or steps. All right. So if you wanted to create uh, an exported uh, parameter that you can tweak outside of it, that's how you would go ahead and do that. And there are all different kinds of, of things like that. Uh, for example, I'll go ahead and if you wanted to do a custom color for something, uh, we would have a uniform. It would be a vector three or vector four, right? So vet three or vec four depends if you want RGB or RGBA. Uh, and for example, I'll just call this color. And instead of hint range, uh, it used to be hint color, but in this case it would be, it's changed to source color. And now you see inside of your parameter, if you do this, what I'll have our little color wheel here, we could select colors. So it, you want to make uh, parameters for your shader, it's that easy to have them exported out there for you to tweak later. I'm going to go ahead and delete that color line though, because we don't need that. And inside of our fragment here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a VEC3. And this will be our color. And this will be equal to a VEC3 of uh, just all zero, so we can just put in 0, 0.0, just the one argument, and that'll assume zero for all three of these. And make sure you end every line with a semicolon, because this is, again, uh, not GD script if that's what you're used to. This is, a, it, this is its own language. 
All right. So with that time property that we created, that's what's going to control, uh, in a sense, the speed of our color effect. And this vector three that we just created here has been initialized to be all zeros across the board. So that means that right now, at the current time, color is black. Okay. Now the next line here, we're actually going to create we're actually going to do this three times because we're going to have one for the red channel, one for the green channel, and one for the blue channel. And I'm just going to save a little bit of time here and just kind of put that in. That. I'm not going to mix my spaces and tabs. There we go. We're going to go like that. And just going through these since they're all, all three of them are the same. Uh, to explain this, we use the sign function, which if you... Remember back in school, uh, with uh, math class, we have sine, cosine, and uh, God, the third one's kind of escaped me at the moment. But uh, we use, in this case, we're using the sine function to calculate a value based on the UV coordinate, and specifically, we're working with the X uh, property of it. Now, if you wanted this to go left and right we're using x if you want this to go uh up and down then we're going to use uh y instead of x now you see that we're taking that this coordinate and the time variable that we created up top and that's how we're gonna kind of calculate this and this uh 3.0 you can actually we can tweak that later and depending on what you want you may want to I changed that the one that you saw on the card back. I believe I was using 0 0.7 for that, but we'll get to that when when you want to make a uh, little tweaks to see what every what each little element does really. And you'll notice that this is all wrapped inside of a function called ABF. Well, this function is going to ensure that our value is always going to be positive, so it will our result will never go into the negatives, which is good because you can't have a negative color, right? Zero is the lowest that you can go when it comes to a color. So that's all that that is uh, going to do for us there. And like I said, we're doing that three times. Once for the green channel, blue channel, and red channel. All right. So now with these three separate uh, sine functions that are calculating in total our RGB that we're using. Um, of the sprite color we can uh this is going to shift it by uh, its rainbow right it's going to shift uh shift it by the different amounts based off our time and this is where the this rainbow effect is going to kind of come in so all we have to do now is we have to assign this color to our object right so we would say we go color the rgb because we want to set the uh, rgb value of the color that is on our texture or that is on our uh, sprite here and we want to set that equal to the color that we just created and of course we end all of our lines with a semicolon and you'll see there it is it's not exactly like we had it in uh, the intro but this is the shader and you'll see if we go down and tweak our time property inside of our shader parameters you can see it animating there now you can go through and you can now animate this in however way you would like, whether that's using a uh, timer node. Um, you could probably use an animation player with that. Uh, if you want to maybe just tweak it with uh, code in general. So if you wanted to make some kind of rainbow effect based off of where uh, an object is rotated, if that makes sense, um, you can get away with things like that. And that's where using that time shader parameter is going to come into play. Now, for this specific example, I'm not going to use that. I don't need that. So what I'm going to do is instead of using the time uh, parameter that we created, in all caps, I'm just going to write the word time. And that is its own thing in this language. And you can see if we animate just uh, one channel versus all three we can get uh, very different results here. So you can kind of tweak little 
effects, as I was saying uh, previously. Just by tweaking little things like this, you can kind of get different effects with this. Which is cool, but for the purposes of this, we're going to use uh, just pass it in for all three. Now, what you want to see is uh, we had it more of an overlay uh, when we had it with the card's background. And this obviously is not an overlay, it's just taking that sprite's shape, we'll say, for that. And by all means, if we bring in uh, another shape like this, maybe that's what you want. Maybe you want to have some kind of rainbow element like this going on for uh, your HUD or some kind of special meter or something. And that is perfectly fine. That may be what you want. But if you want that kind of overlay look that we had or that you saw at the beginning, instead of setting our RGB equal to our color, if we want it to be an overlay, we're just going to set it times equals. So we're going to multiply our current RGB, right? So the texture of our sprite, we're going to multiply it by our new color to get this new overlaid rainbow effect. Now, I've mentioned earlier, if you wanted it to go the other way, you could just swap out uh, X for Y. There we go. And you can see we got this weird, this kind of weird effect with some going left to right and some of it going uh, up and down. So you can kind of create, again, these interesting effects just by tweaking our X and Y here by tweaking which ones are going by the actual time and which one is maybe going by a variable. And then I, again, we can come in here and we can make small tweaks going forward again like that. We just changed one of these threes to a 0 0.7 and now we have a completely different looking effect. So you can go ahead now, go in here and tweak this and make your own, your own kind of look, even though uh, all of or everyone's shader here is going to start with just that rainbow effect. You can make these tweaks they really make it your own. But and there you go. There you have it. With just a few lines of code. It's a little bigger than the one that we did last time. Two weeks ago, I believe it was at this point. But just a couple more lines. We now have this rainbow effect that you can customize. And you know how to create a uh, an exported variable, we call it, uh, to create shader parameters that you can tweak. All right, so that's it. Now you can take go ahead and take that and create some eye-catching visuals or some subtle effects, however you want to go about that, uh, with your games and. Uh, with that, take care. See you guys in the next one. This wasn't too difficult for you guys, I hope. I hope you guys were able to follow along in your second shader here. But that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one.